Good evening, and welcome to another episode of Galactic and Spiritual Wisdom for the New Earth. And I am your host, Cassandra Clegg, and I'm really excited tonight to talk to you about abundance mindset. This one has been very important for me, something I've been working through for a number of years. And I feel like we just keep going deeper on some of these concepts and noticing when the opposite of abundance mindset comes up, which is scarcity, which can also be the lack dynamic. And it's really important, even down to the small detail, to see how we react in certain situations. And that way we'll know if our subconscious driver is actually coming from the scarcity or coming from the abundance mindset. So one thing I want to talk about first about the abundance mindset is looking at our beliefs. Yes, abundance can be about money, but not always about money. It can be about friendships, relationships, career, personal growth, health, family, and yes, of course, money and finances. So when you think about abundance, What sort of beliefs do you feel you hold? Some common ones that I've heard over the years, not just from myself, but from clients is the more that I make, the more I'm taking from others. Or just not feeling good enough overall, whether it's money or relationships or friendships. And then the good old one, more money more problems that will come, more money, more bills, more money, more taxes, right? Here's another goodie. Being wealthy is egoic. Another common one, money cannot buy happiness or just not feeling deserving of money. or Overgiving. If I receive more, I need to do more. Another thing I would like to touch on in a moment here, but think about those beliefs that we just discussed. And then see if there's any beliefs that come up for you. And get out a pen and a piece of paper and write them down if you wish. When you think about your finances, how do you feel? Do you feel stressed? Do you feel as if there's not enough? Money comes in, money goes, money doesn't stay. You can say the same thing about friendships and relationships, career and development as well, or even your health. So really just take some time to think about that. Some people, believe it or not, are scared to hold on to money. So when it comes in, They go on spending sprees. Okay. Now we're just going to go through things that you have witnessed and heard growing up as well as young adulthood. First question I'm going to ask you for your own self-reflection. You can write this down. How did my parents or caregivers, or role models, view money. So think of the ones that you spent the most time with growing up. Maybe it was your mom and dad. Maybe it was your grandparents. But all these people you do want to take into consideration. How did your grandparents view money? How did your aunts and uncles view money when you were around your parents? And then thinking of the same thing as well. So it's not just money related, but how did they view acts of service? 
Did they overgive? Did they have a hard time receiving from others? Was it ever like a tit for tat dynamic? If someone did something for another person, did they expect something in return? Or if you had received help, was it ever held over your head? Very important to know. Because if someone did something out of the goodness of their heart, but then held that over you, that was not done from a loving place. And then think of this as well. Was this discussed as a child? Was money discussed as a child or was affection discussed as a child? What was said? Did you hear things like, well, we can't afford that. We don't have enough money for this. Even though that is probably the truth, when an adult says things like that to a younger child in their developing brains, they're developing scarcity. And I'll just quickly put in there like another way to word this other than I can't afford it or we can't afford that would be more like this is what we can do in the moment. And if it's something that can't be done, it's an interesting dynamic to play with. Saying something more along the lines of, this isn't a priority for us right now. And of course, there's other things that, you know, as a parent, you can go into. And I mean, this episode is not really about that. But then, of course, showing them the value of the money, setting up savings, getting them to do things beyond the norm to create more savings and things like that. Um, and showing them when they're a lot younger as well, like this costs this amount of money. This is how many dollars that is. So they can comprehend what that actually means. So anyways, back to this. Reflecting on what I said about money, about relationships, about health. Also, what was said about how other people spent their money? There's so many judgments on this. And how other people choose to use their money is their business. But in some families, this can be a point of contention beyond family members as well as friends and other people that they see. Oh, they take vacations three times a year. Must be nice. That is definitely coming from more of like that limited perspective, right? Another question to ask. In this moment, how do you feel receiving compliments? What if someone bought a coffee for you or opened a door for you or give you money for no reason or a gift? Do you graciously accept with gratitude? Or do you feel like you owe them? Or do you reject as much as possible? And I've mentioned this before, but it is so important. How do you view five cents or ten cents or a dollar versus a hundred dollars versus five hundred versus a thousand? If you place less importance on the smaller amounts, it will be much harder to receive the bigger amounts. So many say, well, if I just get $1,000, that would help me out so much, but then will scoff at a dollar that they find on the ground. 
And I know it might seem simple and silly, and I know it's obvious, but when you think of if you really want to call in a thousand dollars, but you see a very small importance with the smaller denominations, well, what do you think makes up the bigger denominations? So if you're rejecting the smaller pieces and feeling like that's not important, or it's not going to help me, it's not going to do much to receive 50 bucks, you know? It's just important to know how you treat the smaller denominations. Because again, it comes from more of that scarcity side. And another one to ask yourself, do you hold grudges? Or do you work through forgiveness often? This is a hard one. Because again, I've talked about this before, especially in trauma. You can't tell someone to forgive another person. It's very easy to say, well, just forgive and let go. Sounds simple and easy, right? Wrong. Forgiveness, while it can be somewhat of a simple process, it's never an easy one. Because often we have to accept the fact we will never receive an apology, or closure. And if we don't get those things, do we hold on to that? Do we hold on to the grudge? Do we hold on to that pain and stuff it down? Or can you work through all of the emotions around what happened? And forgive yourself and forgive the other person. And see the situation for what it was. Do you also fear change? Another good thing to ask yourself. How do I respond when things do not go as planned? These are all some really good, big reflection pieces, and it will give you an insight into if you're in scarcity or in abundance. Feel free to pause this anytime and write your reflections down. But we're going to go into some reframes. So yes, we're in scarcity, and I've pinpointed parts of myself. That's in scarcity. So what now? What do we do? So for me, the reframe and writing them down and having them where you can see it is extremely important and revisit it on a daily basis. So this is not really an affirmation. It's a reframe. And it's saying things in a way that's believable to your body and your mind, especially when it comes to the ego mind, right? Who wants to keep you safe in your little comfort zone. So for in scarcity, the ego mind will try and keep us there because it's safe, it's comfortable, it's what you know, but ultimately it is not the truth. So going into some reframes, so write them down, look at them every day. The first one, we just talked about this a little bit, but the, I can't afford it. Reframe that for yourself to It's not a priority right now. And see how you feel. If it's really not a priority, then this will feel good. But if it is a priority, then you have to reassess. How can you make this work? How can you make it fit within your budget? The other reframe for this can be, well, instead of saying I can't afford this, say I can afford to do this instead. And unfortunately, there's times where you can't afford to do something else. But reframing it as this isn't a priority and knowing what your priorities are in this moment will help you feel less stuck and less shitty, for lack of better terms, on this. The next one, 
If you're feeling reluctant to contribute and share information, resources, and time. I've been here, especially in my business. What do you share for free and what do you charge for? (laughs) And it's an interesting dynamic because I began hoarding information and not being open with information I had, not in following not following the aligned action. And there's so much that you can create and do. It's like a little free thing. But when you're in scarcity, you will hold all of that information. You will hoard all the resources and time and not contribute. And of course, with this, you have to have boundaries, right? You can't give everything away for free all the time. Obviously, we know this. But it's a good balance to have between, you know, sharing and doing all of this. So reframing it to, I am willing to contribute. I am willing to share my information, resources, and time within reason. Are you unwilling to learn? Of course, the reframe is, I am becoming more willing in learning new things. The next one. Promoting only self and self-accomplishment. So, of course, the reframe here, it's not really a belief, but the reframe in action and attitude would not just to be promoting yourself and your accomplishments, but to also promote others who you know, who you're aligned with, who you trust, and whose information you do find valuable. So, a good mix of self as well as others. Do you feel the need to dictate and micromanage? You can reframe this to, I am more willing to be open and trusting. Or sorry, I am becoming more open and trusting. And then other attitudes and beliefs is, I am not enough. Or, there is not enough for everyone. This is a huge one. We often think we're taking from someone else, from their light, from their ability to, you know, manifest money or whichever. Or you're taking from the person that you're charging, taking from their ability to feed themselves. Feeling like there's not enough to go around. I have been there too. And I used to say things like, oh, you know, they're never going to be able to afford my program. And now when I have reframed this and I think to myself and say, well, if someone had not shared information with me because they assumed I couldn't afford it, what a slap in the face. That is kind of an egoic thing to say, in my opinion. Oh, well, they'll never be able to afford it. That would be so upsetting if someone assumed that about me. You know? And I like to think about that. I try to put myself in the other person's shoes. Well, if I was to make this assumption, and someone did this to me, how would I feel? Would that feel good? No. Often we make it a story about the other person that's not even true. Actually, I would guarantee that 95% is usually not true. So the reframe would be here that there's more than enough to go around. Another behavior is to be competitive. 
to want to compete with others in the same field or compete with others in general and maybe find their success intimidating. So the reframe for being competitive is I don't feel the need to compete with anyone. I'm becoming a better version of myself every day. The more I succeed, the more others around me succeed. And together, we succeed. And the reframe from finding other success intimidating would be others' successes are inspiring. Others' successes show me that this is possible for me too. With this, moving forward out of the scarcity to abundance, any time that you catch yourself thinking in that scarcity mindset, don't get discouraged. Recognize when it shows up because awareness is going to be your first step. Awareness that this thought, this belief, this emotion is popping up. And then ask yourself, how can I see this from a different perspective? What is the lesson in the experience that you're having? And many times when we're in scarcity, we're also in survival. So I do have resources for that. And it's on my website, CassandraClegg.com. Click on resources. There's many to help you get out of survival. It's really hard to shift into abundance when you're constantly in a fight or flight, freeze or faint mode, when your body is overwhelmed with that. It's hard to think clearly. Your memory that memory hard to recall. Forgetful clumsiness. There's many, many symptoms of a malfunctioning nervous system. So that'd be step number two. And start shifting from saying things like, I'm not lucky, to I am becoming more and more lucky every day. Luck finds me. And this one for me is super important too, because I used to tell myself that all the time, I'm just not lucky. So every time I would say that, there'd be certain opportunities I'd be closing off. And I don't mean luck in the lottery. <laughs> I mean, just in any type of contest or giveaway or just an opportunity that just opens up. I'd be pushing those things away. Start journaling the feelings. Where do you allow the scarcity mindset to come through? And what are they? Anytime you notice it, and if it's not a familiar one, write it down and find what the reframe would be for yourself. Ask yourself, where do I already feel abundant in my life? Is it with friendships? Is it with affection from my partner? What feels abundant right now? In the things that you normally have a scarcity mindset with, practice gratitude. For me, I used to cringe when paying bills. <laughs> I used to cringe when I filled up my tank. <laughs> 
So instead of cringing and contracting, breathe, drop your shoulders, drop your jaw, relax your hips, breathe, and then say, I am grateful that I am able to pay for gas in my car to get me where I need to go. To be able to have fun trips with my family. To be able to get to work. To have adventures. I'm so grateful for paying my phone bill so that I can keep in contact with family. Or to be able to have a job. As a lot of people rely on their phone, like me, I rely 100% on my phone for my job. So every time I pay that bill now, I hold my heart and I say why I'm grateful. I'm able to connect with clients. I'm able to connect with family. I'm able to keep track of my calendar, my schedule. Alpha state meditations really helpful when you are doing this work, when you're shifting your beliefs and your mindset. And the hardest thing to do, especially if you have lived a life where you haven't had much at all, the hard part is actually focusing on the things that you do have. So again, this is very similar to the gratitude. Focusing on what you already have so that you can make room for more coming through. Gratitude is all about having appreciation for what is in your life. So it could be as simple as just having gratitude for having support and love around you. If you are lucky to have that, well, not lucky, but <laughs> but if you have that in your life, Because you'll hear a lot of people that will say that they don't have that. So if you have love around you and you have support around you, yes. I guess that does have to do with luck too. Grateful for having food, regardless of what it is. And I know so many people say you have to have only high vibrational food, which can cause a further divide sometimes for people who cannot just simply afford to have fresh, organic, squeezed juices all the time. So if you have food day to day, heck yes, celebrate that too. Yes. You're able to put food on the table. Yes. Do you have a roof over your head? Yes. Grateful for having a roof over your head, support, love, food. I mean, are the utilities paid? Awesome. Do you have clothes? Yes. Another thing to be grateful for. You have clothes, you have shoes, do you have a car? Or maybe you're just able to take transit everywhere. That's awesome. I wish I lived in a place where I could take like something like the sea train or the sky train or the actual bus because our system here is not the greatest. But it'd be cool to have something like that, you know? So even if you don't have a car but you have access to a public transit system that runs frequently, amazing. And even when I'm outside, I'm grateful for the sun for the nature around me, the trees. Being able to actually go outside and go for a walk in my neighborhood. Everyone's life is so different. So what I might be grateful for might vastly differ from others. Maybe you're grateful to live by water. Maybe you're grateful to live by the mountains. It doesn't always have to be material things. It could be anything. Even just hearing the birds. Or noticing a butterfly. 
This will also help keep you present. Noticing the little things. It's like that good old saying. Stopping and smelling the roses. <laughs> Don't forget to do that once in a while. If we look, there is beauty all around us. And if you've ever lived in a place where you live paycheck to paycheck or barely got by, it's really hard to switch out of that. It's hard to when you're figuring out your next meal or your next bill payment or maybe there's a bunch past due. It's hard to go outside and say, yay, I'm grateful for the sun because you're ripping out your hair trying to figure out what to do and find a solution. I, I feel you on that. Whew, that's heavy. But nervous system regulation. Doing these reframes, finding the opportunities as they present, and taking that aligned action, which is first and foremost. Instead of applying to 500 jobs, think about the job that would be the most beneficial for you. How would it look to you? How would you be treated by your manager? Or maybe you'd like to be in a management position. What kind of hours, time, and day? If you're able to choose that type of thing. Some can, some can't, and really it's all about looking at what you would like this to look like for yourself. This really does take a lot of reflection and working through the beliefs and the emotions and the reframes and regulating your nervous system and finding gratitude. It's not an instant, here's your magic pill, and tomorrow you will wake up an abundant person. <laughs> but abundance is her birthright, it's her nature. As we look around us, everything is abundant. Nature is abundant. So remember, it is your birthright. Abundance is. Remember your gifts. Remember your strengths, your talents, what makes you you. And use that in your life. In your day to day, recognizing what your strengths are can really help your self esteem, especially when we talk about this abundance mindset. Self esteem is everything our ability to go with the flow, our ability to handle change as it comes. All right, soul family, so much love to you and thank you so much for listening. Let me know. If you've got value out of this episode, I would love to hear your thoughts. 